going live. You're live. Hey, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today on Nutmeg Notebook. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. This is my husband, Hello, everybody. Tom. I'm here and too. We're so excited to do this live presentation with you today. We have a special friend in the house with us. Well, not actually in the house. He's in <laughs> Holland, Michigan. But we have Corey Geyer here from the Holland Bowl Mill Company. We're so excited that he could join us today. He's going to be telling us all about the company, the products that they make. You can see I have a large array of them here in my home because we actually use these throughout our kitchen every single day. As those of you who have followed me for some time know, I am very well known for making my chopped salads, which I make every day. Tom also has them. Every and day, almost. Every day, he almost every day. I do have mine every day. And so we're gonna show you all about the bowls, show you how they're made and answer your questions in real time. So Corey, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you here. Yes, Tammy, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to um, converse with you and kind of go over all the products we make and answer any questions that any of your followers might have. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to tell a little story about how I first met Corey. So uh, several years ago, I was in Chef AJ's program, online program called Ultimate Weight Loss. And a lot of us were eating chopped salads. Now I had a plastic bowl actually, that I was using back then to chop my salad. And a friend in the Ultimate Weight Loss Group, her name is BJ Swingle, and BJ was chopping hers in a wood bowl. And so I asked her, where did you get it? And she said, from Amazon. So I went on Amazon and I ordered one. And then as I was blogging about my chopped salads, people would say, where'd you get that bowl? And I would give them the Amazon link. And then they were always telling me, it's not available, it's out of stock. So one day after having so many people tell me they couldn't get the wood bowl, I looked on the bottom of it and saw that it was Holland um, Bowl Mill. So I looked up their um, website and found a phone number and I called. We, we, tracked, we tracked Corey down <laughs> yes, yes. because we had, we had a discussion yeah. we wanted to have. Yeah, yeah. I was, and so I called him and I said, hey, I have your bowl and we, I love we it. Calling to, we weren't calling to complain. We were, calling, really. to make, no, yes. we were calling to make a helpful suggestion. No, exactly. And I said, hey, I wish you could up the uh, quantity of bowls that you have available on Amazon because a lot of my subscribers want to buy one and it's always sold out. And he said, hey, we have plenty of those bowls here at the Holland Bowl Mill. And he said, that actually happens to be a third party, but maybe you'd like to be an affiliate. And I said, well, will that help my followers get bowls? And so, cause I was very naive and he was like, yes, we can supply all the bowls that your customers would yeah. want. And, and so, that's how we got to know it was, Corey. It was, it was an or this is a the plant based community would like this. This is an organic relationship. We <laughs> we found Corey organically. We did, and we and, introduced and, him to the plant based world. And yeah. then about a year ago, Chef AJ was staying with us. She had come to do some work um, in our community, and she was staying with us. And she noticed all of my beautiful bowls, and she was like, "Tell me about these." And um, because she wanted to know more about them as well. And so we really got Corey's um, company in, well entrenched in the plant based, the plant -based in the plant based oh, community. Sure. I have just a little bit of housekeeping. Some people in the comments are noticing that Corey is, that, that his <laughs> title on the page says Alicia, Alicia uh, Geyer. And that's, I presume, I presume that's your spouse. That is, yes. So, yep. so yeah, so <laughs> we are calling him Corey with a K, <laughs> but he, I, evidently he's using Alicia's computer. <laughs> I am today, yes, yep. <laughs> So anyway, that's how our relationship um, started because Tom and I only promote products that we actually do use and love. And when we find, find something that we think is worthy, then we like to share it with you, the viewer. So, um, and these certainly are. So Corey, can you just give, in case we have some new um, people that are new to HBM and HBM stands for Holland Bowl Mill, it's just easier to say. Um, tell us a little bit about the history because I know it's a family business. I would love, I would love to do that. First of Great. all, I just want to say 
we've been so blessed to work with Tammy and Tom from Nutbag and Chef AJ, the whole uh, plant-based community is so amazing. And it's been so, so fun for us. So we do really appreciate you and all of your followers. So it comes to Holland Bowl Mill. We have a very long history. The company actually started in 1906. It was started by another family in Muskegon, which is about 45 uh, minutes north of Holland here in Michigan. And that was started by the Fuller family. And then my great grandfather started the original wooden shoe factory here in Holland, Michigan in 1926. At that time, we connected with the Fuller family and we started selling their wooden bowls throughout the wooden shoe factory in our different shops. We did that for the next uh, about 56 years or so. And then uh, Vic Fuller called my dad and said, hey, are you interested in purchasing the bowl mill? We did at that time, moved it behind the wooden shoe factory. And then uh, unfortunately we had to close down the shoe in the late 1990s. We moved the bowl mill to our existing location in 2001 kind of rebuilt all of our lathes and opened our doors up a year later. We now make uh, 800 to 1,000 bowls a week. We're the largest manufacturer of wooden bowls in the United States. Bowls is our bread and butter, but we're zero waste. So if it can't be made in the bowl, it's made into the cutting boards, utensils, uh, a lot of secondary products. We're zero, like I said, zero waste. So sustainability is a huge aspect of our company. We start with large trees and within that, not one part of that tree ends up in a landfill. Shavings get sold for horse bedding. Excess wood is made into all of our secondary products and anything that we can't use, it's sold for firewood, um, which is kind of unique and uh, very important that we um, utilize every part of that tree. And uh, yeah, as we continue to kind of go over what we do with Tammy, we can look at all the different sizes, talk about the free engraving we do, which is a huge hit. We do that on the underside of the bowl at no extra cost. As you'll see in front of Tammy, she's got our fruit bowl, one of our best selling products, very unique. The holes help with the uh, air circulation and keep the fruit fresh longer. Uh, when it comes to the chopping bowls, our fruit to, uh, main sizes are 12 inch, 15 inch, and 17 inch. By far, our number one seller is the 15 inch, and that's what Tammy and Tom uh, use daily. And then uh, I think they have posted some of the specials we're doing with Nutmeg Notebook. As always, we do the free Mezzaluna knife if you hit that $125 mark. And then we're uh, introducing a few new specials. If it's over $100, you'll receive a free six inch bowl. If you hit that 150 mark, you'll get upgraded to a free seven inch bowl. And if you get to $200, we'll throw in two free seven inch bowls, which are perfect for a side salad or putting ingredients or different things in while you're uh, doing your chopped salad. Fantastic. And um, I'm also a fourth generation owner too. And then my sister is also part of the company. My dad is still um, a part of the company. My mom's here all the time too. So it's kind of a family affair. Uh, we have 17 employees. Um, our products are carried in 350 stores across the United States. So we're huge on Made America and uh, keeping everything local. And Corey, you to, can you, you share with us? want to tell them about us? the lawnmower real quick? Oh yeah, in so case. our lawn service just showed up. We were afraid this was going to happen today. Some <laughs> days they come early. Um, and of course, today they did. So if our mics are picking it up, they're only here about 10 minutes. And they'll, and they'll be, gone. be gone. We're sorry but about that. Corey, can you tell us where the um, trees are sourced that yeah. you use for your yeah. products? So about 90% of our trees come from here in Michigan. So as simple as say, uh, someone lived in the Holland area, a big storm came through, knocked down a few cherry trees. In turn, they would call local tree service. We work with that tree service. Those trees would come back to us. So we're kind of in a way saving them from, you know, just being cut up into firewood. Then that ends up being um, the products. Then we work with some larger mills who are doing more like clearings. Every tree that we take in, we do what's called select cutting. We plant a new tree. So that's a huge another program that um, we're cute, really um, yeah. proud of doing. And then uh, also, if you go on our website, we were featured on a show called How It's Made on the Discovery and Science Channel. They mm -hmm. filmed here in 2007, and you can watch the whole bowl making process right on our website. And, and it's a and then we do free program. if anyone ever gets out to the Holland area. We have a retail store right on site. We do free tours daily, and you can actually watch uh, the whole bowl making process. 
I love that. I, I love that you're environmentally friendly yes. and um, that you're planting a tree for every tree that gets mm -hmm. cut down. That just makes us all feel better yes. about um, purchasing these products. So you said you're in the new showroom. I would love a tour. Yeah, I can kind of walk around. So I'm just at okay. the checkout counter right now. We just opened this up in uh, mid-June. We were supposed to be opening it up in February and then the world happened, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so look over oh. here. I was going to have an employee help me, but it didn't end up working out. So this is our one of my favorite parts of the new showroom. This is a mural timeline of our whole bowl making process. I love uh, that. Process. So it starts in 19... Oh, I'm trying to keep it simple. 1906. So then uh, we do a lot of secondary products that we sell more exclusively out of the showroom, like these custom uh, trees you might see here. Ah, little Christmas trees. Yeah, those are amazing. But if somebody did want to buy them, could they just call you? If yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of a look around the showroom. We yeah, show us those, those lights. Full lights here, which is kind of cool. So those yeah. are fruit bowls that we use as a uh, mirror. Lights. I love that. And then uh, walk down here. So we have each uh, wood type broken down in its own little um, display. We have our fruit bowls over here, some of our best sellers. I love my fruit bowl. In fact, I need a second one because we buy yeah. so much fruit now that mm -hmm. it, I have overflow. So I'm going to move out into the mill where I have some stuff set up and I can okay. kind of show you guys all the different sizes. Wonderful. He's on his mobile laptop. I know. That's, that's, a mobile that's laptop. great. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet it smells really good. It in does. There. It definitely does. All right. Okay. So I know that um, we got a lot of... Um, questions about the different size bowls. So they were hoping that you could show us a 12, a 15, yeah. and a 17. So I'm going to grab a few bowls quickly. I'll be right back. Okay. So while he's doing that, I can show you guys. Um, Tom and I really like the 15 inch bowls. So um, this, this is my second bowl that I had. It's a Beechwood. The first one that I have, I actually keep it at my our, at our daughter's house so that she can make salads there. And if we go over, um, we can chop salads when we're there too. So this one is a 15 inch beechwood. This one is a 15 inch cherry. Uh, I got this last year because I wanted Tom and I to be able to each have our own bowls because sometimes we're chopping salads for the same meal and we're kind of impatient and we don't want to wait for the other one. So we have uh, two of those. And then this is my um, pretty cherry bowl that I got for my birthday last year. And Corey was talking about the free engraving. And so mine says, get healthy, stay healthy, one meal at a time on the bottom. And you could have uh, a little bit of scripture written on there. You could one, have- The one 15 inch one for a retail yep. order with some custom engraving, which is kind of unique. It says Oliver family, big sassy salad bowl. Oh, that's adorable. I love that. So you can customize it however you want. And then that- you can, Yeah, you can do a simple like this one here, just has family's last name. We do so many for your followers, as simple as Tammy's Chopping Bowl 2020, uh, Whole Food Plant Base. It's so, we've seen so many different things. It's the best is to keep it simple since you do have limited space. It goes on the bottom of the bowl. Once you and click how many, on the list. How many char characters? Is around limit? 50 characters or so is kind of the limit. Okay, perfect. All right. You want engraving. We do a lot more custom engraving on the inside of the bowl, but there mm -hmm. is a cost associated with that. If anyone was interested in doing that, they just send us an email or give us a call, then we can properly quote it. It's just okay. dictated uh, quote by quote, depending on what we're engraving. Okay, great. Uh, we have a, a few questions. Maybe we can run by, uh, Rand, uh, by Corey here. Okay. Uh, Randy's asking, how old typically are the trees that we use? Because, you know, we can count the rings on some of these. Uh, so they're... Uh, oh yeah, I mean we're, we're we start with eight to fourteen foot uh, logs, at least sixteen inches in diameter. So some of the trees are over a hundred years old easily. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of growth rings. Okay. And then that's the a next... cool thing about wood too is every single bowl is going to be unique and different in its own way. It's going to tell its own story. No two bowls are alike. We take right. a lot of bowls, and every single one's going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which is quite amazing. Sure. You have another question? Oh, we have a few more questions if you want to uh, okay. take them down. Go. Okay. Uh, how, uh, how often do you oil your bowls? And so, uh, yeah, great question. We include extensive care instructions. If you're using the bowl daily to chop in, I would recommend just every Sunday retreating it. Typically after five washes or so, it's gonna go a long way. Your bowl's gonna look 10 times better, um, prevent dryness. We do have a lifetime guarantee. If they do ever crack from natural use, we'll replace it for free, no questions asked. The key is just no dishwasher, wash with warm water and soap and periodically uh, retreat it. We've had customers 40 years later, they've used their bowl every day. It might, it randomly cracks. They send us an email, we'll replace it for free. So it's a nice heirloom piece that you can kind of pass down generation to generation. One thing I do like to mention, being a chopping bowl, it's about the functionality of the piece. You will get some marks and minimal staining. Um, gonna not be, too, if you properly wash it, properly retreat it, like Tammy uses her bowl every day. You can see there's not much there. The key is just be somewhat careful when you're chopping and uh, retreat it. Yeah, the, so you get a little bit of a green patina just because, you know, the, all the greens that we chop in it, that's just what they do. And so it does get a little bit of a green patina in it. And you just need to know that that's going to happen. And just like using a cutting board, the Mezzaluna knife is going to make cut marks on the bowl, but you know, learning to have a soft technique can minimize how much of that happens. And the only other thing that I've ever had stain it is um, fresh strawberries. And I don't chop fresh strawberries in here, but a lot of times I'll add some chopped um, sliced strawberries to it and it'll get a little bit of staining. But like after I've used it a couple more times, then that little bit of staining goes away. And what's interesting, Corey, is I like to use a lot of beets as well. And the beets don't seem to They don't. I know it's really where the only thing is strawberries. We've heard that from customers before. And that's kind of what I always tell everyone, be careful with strawberries. Really, raspberries, beets, no problem. For some yeah. reason, strawberries and wood, they just, they don't get along the best. Yeah. yeah, but it does fade. And then we've also discovered that if we take the bowl and set it out in the um, sun oh, for wow. a little bit, that seems to- Definitely uh, does, yeah. Especially fades. with like cherry wood, it's gonna enrich in and darker over time more mm -hmm. than any other woods, but in most of the woods in general will do that also. Uh huh. So a couple, a question from Randy um, to follow up. Why are we oiling the bowl? What, what's the what purpose was that, of the Tom? oil? Why, what's the purpose of oiling the bowl? Why are we- The purpose of that? oiling is being wood, if after washing it, numerous times it's it's going to dry out and that's going to yeah. prevent cracking and, crack. and um just like a cutting board wooden utensils you have to retreat it that's what we dip all of our bowls in food safe mineral oil then we make a product in house called bees oil that's what we also treat them with that's what we highly highly recommend i would say about 90 percent of tammy's followers chef aj's followers are okay with using it we understand if you're not being a bee product you can use food safe mineral oil or tom has a great product right there or walnut oil will also suffice. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a, an ethical vegan and you don't want your bowl to be treated with the beeswax mineral oil mixture, all you have to do is put that in the comment section on the page when you're ordering it and ask them to give it to you um, without the beeswax and they can yep. do that. And then you exactly. can just yep. purchase the um, food grade mineral oil that you can put on it yourself. So, and we do find that the beeswax one though does seem to offer more protection yeah, to it. It's going to penetrate a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And it just stays better. And then you'll notice that when you do wash your bowl, that the water beads up on the bowl. And, you know, because it has that protection of the beeswax. But the mineral oil also works very well because we've also used that. Okay. Um, Another question? Yeah, uh, Marsha is asking about, do we recommend a single or a double-bladed mezzaluna? I think either one is fine. Um, yeah, yeah, so here's the mezzaluna that if you reach the $125 mark with an order and you use our affiliate link, you get this mezzaluna knife. Just the, the knife. Just the knife, knife, not the sheath, but you get the knife and it's a single blade. And I actually chop an entire one pound salad in here 
And this works beautifully. And we've timed it and it takes about three minutes to chop a one pound salad to the fineness that we like it. You may or may not chop yours as fine as I do, but um, that's what we find. Um, and the single blade works really well. I think the double blade with the contours and stuff here might be even a little unwieldy because one blade's gonna contact the wood, the other blade's not gonna contact the wood. So what you so, think? What do you think, I think Corey? it'd be easier to use a single blade. I mean, the sing we highly recommend our knife. It was developed the kind to go perfectly with our bowls. We've had people use Ulu Nice from Alaska, double blade, and they'll, they'll work definitely, but mm -hmm. yeah. in my opinion, our uh, knife's gonna work a little bit better. Yeah, uh, we, we have Corey for a while and then he's gonna have to, to uh, go, go on to take care of some little ones. So I'll be talking about sharpening and, and that kind of stuff a little bit later. Yeah, and if sure. we have time while Corey's here, that's great too. But I've got a few things for show and tell on, on maintaining the knife. Yeah, so they did come out with a sheet for it that you can purchase. And I really like this because it gives me a nice way to display my blade and a safe way to do it so that nobody accidentally gets cut. And you can purchase this separately. And Corey, where would they find this on the website? That would be uh, on our homepage within the featured products, or okay. you can find it in the chopping bowl category. They're $20, they come in cherry or walnut. Cherry would go best with the you know, cherry, beach bowl, maple, red oak. Um, then the walnut, the darker one, you would get the darker handle knife, and then you would want the walnut knife holder. Mm -hmm. One thing I did want to mention, which Tammy does such a good job explaining, but you'll see the chopping bowl category on our website. Those are going to come with the Mezzaluna knife. There's no difference between the bowls in the chopping bowl category and the standalone bowls. You guys are going to want to order just the bowl if you hit that 125 mark, since you're getting that knife for free. Yeah, with the nutmeg, you know, the hollandbowlmeal.com forward slash nutmeg that forward slash nutmeg gets you the free Mezzaluna knife. Exactly, been, that's what I'm bringing you directly. the chopping kit, that. you're gonna wind up paying for the Mezzaluna knife, but for Nutmeg Notebook subscribers or our viewers, that, that's built in. So and then one, other, oh, go ahead. Oh, one other thing too, when you use that link, it's gonna bring you directly to our website. Now you are ordering under Nutmeg. You will not see the knife show up in your cart or the other free bowls, but I can guarantee you will receive it. When the order comes to us, it comes under Nutmeg Notebook. We see that. If you hit those certain tiers, then we automatically throw in the, the free items. Their, their printer has a Nutmeg dispenser. And so when the <laughs> Nutmeg orders print out, it sprinkles yeah. in with Nutmeg and they can't, they, they tell by smell that that's a Nutmeg order. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I'm making that up, people. Uh, okay, yeah. Next question uh, from Judy. I have, I may have chopped too hard, but in my bowl, can the bowl be resurfaced? Say that one more time, Tom, there's some noise. She's, she's, there's chopped, she's been chopping too hard in the bowl, she feels. And, and so the bottom of the bowl has become rough. Can it be sanded? Can it be resurfaced? Yes, it can be. Um, always, again, they can send me, us pictures to our customer service email. We get that all the time. We can assess the situation, look at the bowl and then give you the best recommendations. Yeah, I, I, I have done that with, website. I have I have done that with Tammy's cherry wood bowl. Um, Cause she, she, she tends to chop like only in more in the middle. And this is, we actually have his and her bowls. This one's mine, this one's Tammy's. <laughs> and I kind of have a technique where I chop all around the sides of the bowl in kind of a circular motion. And she tends to chop more in the center. And I have had hand sanded this with, with with some 60 grit and then some 120 yeah, grit with sand paper. Yep, yeah. It, yeah, it got kind of rough and so forth, but it sanded right up nice. And, there, it, and that was kind of difficult by hand. I know at the hardware store, they probably have what they call mop sanders, mop head sanders. So, um, yeah. and, and it, but this bowl, this one is over, been in use over two years and it. And we use them every day and yeah. we use them to chop our salads and we also will chop herbs in them. So I'll throw cilantro in there or basil or mint and I'll use the mezzaluna yeah. and I'll chop the fresh yeah. herbs in there yeah. as don't, well. Don't think of using a hatchet on a log. Think about more like a, a slicing, you yeah. know, a, a chop roll, a chop roll, chop and roll. And yeah. Yes. And, and it can chop people hard. hard, which will kind of go over how we recommend using the knife um, with some good instructions. And then Corey, another question we get a lot is which wood is best? Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that just came up from that. Tiffany. Yeah. Which bowl yeah. is your favorite? Yeah, so again, they're all hardwoods. They all come with that lifetime guarantee, all gonna be ideal for chopping, serving. So honestly, 
it comes down to aesthetics. Cherry, the one that Tammy's holding right now, is by far number one seller. It just has really intricate grain patterns. Uh, Beach is the best price point. It's 125. Also a beautiful wood. You can't go wrong with it. Walnut is very popular too, which is going to be a little bit of a darker wood, but then also have that beautiful sap wood running through it. So a lot of them will be completely dark or some will have that sap wood. Um, during checkout, you can always let us know if you have a preference for like walnut, all dark or uh, two-tone, meaning sapwood. Same idea with cherry. The one that Tammy is holding is more uniform, but then we also have ones that are going to have that sapwood in it. And uh, we can also pull one to your liking when it comes uh, to yeah, cherry. And this, this one has, this yes. cherry bowl has a little more of that. But for this one, this one I don't chop in. This is my you know, pretty presentation one that I use when company comes over and I'll put a salad in here. And so I didn't, I don't chop in this one because I just didn't want it to get all marked up. And I did request, I talked to Corey and said, you know, choose one that's pretty uniform in color for this one. So because it's going to get photographed. It gets photographed. It does. Yeah. It's pretty. So yeah. are, there, are there, you know, and this, I, we've gotten this question a lot over the last few years. Is there, what are the Net the net differences in the woods, the cherry versus the the walnut or uh, the beech wood. They're all hardwoods. They're all hardwoods. They're all hardwoods. Maple is going to be the hardest wood that we turn, but they're all going to be somewhat comparable in hardness. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, it really comes down to a stack. One I yeah. wouldn't recommend for chopping is red oak. It's a little bit more of open grain porous wood. Um, it's not yeah. bad at all. It's very popular. But if you're asking me, I would say cherry, walnut, maple, or beech would be the okay. best the best choices. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what you've got there to show us. Yeah. So here we can go over some different sizes. So 15 inches is what Tammy uses. But if you're you know, single or just you only need a smaller shot, the 12-inch bowl will work. A lot of Tammy's followers do use the 12-inch bowl. That's this size. It's uh, two and three-fourths inches deep, equates to about four to five side salads. This is cherry. Um, if you do go with the 12-inch bowl, then you're going to want to order directly out of the chopping bowl category since you wouldn't be getting that knife for free. Those run from $72 to 105 and that includes the knife. And the price is just dictated on what wood um, you choose. The next size up would be the 15 inch, which Tammy has in front of her. And then also this one here, this equates to about eight side salads. We say it's about um, four and a half inches deep. The next size up, which some of Tammy's Chef AJ's followers do use is the 17 inch bowl. It is a big bowl. It serves around 12 <laughs> to 15 side salads. It's uh, five and a half inches deep. It's kind of our ultimate entertaining bowl. Great for chopping, but then also if you're having a big dinner party, it would be uh, great for, you know, serving out of. This is beach. A lot of beach or most of beach is going to have that beautiful ingrain where you can see it's darker on both sides and then running through the middle will be a little bit lighter. And again, beach is going to be at the best price point. The 15 inch being 125. If you jumped up to the 17, it would be 200 but then you'd get the free mezzaluna knife and two uh, free seven inch bowls. And then we have uh, the chopping bowls is our bread and butter, but also we do like the, the heart bowls and a lot of different shapes. These are great, very popular for wedding gifts. This one here is engraved with the bride and groom's name and wedding date. Um, good price point, $45 for the 12 inch one, which he has there and I'm also showing you. Fruit bowls um, are also very, very popular. This is the 12 inch, which is our number one selling size. Tammy has the 15 inch. It just comes down to how much fruit you have at a time. And then if, uh, we do uh, cutting presentation boards too, which I can grab one of those. And I love the presentation boards. Now I do, I chop on them a little bit, but I really like to use them more for presentation. So I don't like to chop on a bit. I mean, you could chop on one side and then use the other side for presentation, but these are beautiful to use like for appetizers or snacks. So, you know, you can put cut apples on here or you can with a dip or you could do hummus. Um, and some raw veggies and, or, you know, they're, vegan they're cheese and crackers. They great. are reversible. Yeah. On so you, one side present on the other. Yep, absolutely. But they're so pretty. I really love using mine 
more as um, presentation boards because I just I feel like they're such beautiful works of art. Yeah. How yeah. long does it how long and does it take? Oh, I'm sorry. How long does it take to make one of the bowls? I mean, is it? I know you start with a log and multiple bowls come out of one log, but you know, is it like from start to finish? It takes about four to five weeks from the uh, turning to the drying process to the sanding to oh. getting oiled. Oh, okay. So, so it's like if somebody wants a bowl, you can't just go find a log and ship it out tomorrow. No, yes. I mean, we have. A, <laughs> yes, yeah. So we get people in like for tours, they'll watch like a nested set be turned. And it's kind of cool. They're watching those bowls get made. We'll mark them through the drying process. And then they'll end up buying those back, which is oh, kind of gives it a sense of whole set. Or we that, do, wouldn't that uh, be neat? We work with a lot of the local colleges. If they have trees go, uh, go down, they'll bring them to us. We'll make a bunch of bowls, cutting boards for them. They'll give them out as alumni gifts and different things like that, which is kind of mm -hmm. a fun uh, partnership. Okay. There. All right. Well, thanks, Randy, for that question, uh, for Corey. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, let's see. Another one. This is the oh. inside engraving. So this is very popular for weddings and special occasions. There is a cost mm -hmm. associated with this. It's all done by freehand. So for example, something like that is $30, which uh, is kind of cool and quite popular. So how many of your employees can do the engraving? So my dad, Dave, does a lot of the free engraving, which goes on the underside. And then we have uh -huh. Macy and Larissa, who also do a lot of the engraving. And then Wes, uh, who's been working with us kind of freelancing for over 30 years, he does all of our more intricate engraving on the inside. Oh, that's awesome. That is such a talent to be able to it do is. that. It's amazing. Yeah. Any more questions, Tom? Um, let me scroll back up here a little bit. So I find that as the bowls age and like the more that we oil them, the prettier they get. Yeah, yep, definitely. You know, and when you oil them, it just brings out the richness of the color in them too. And then one other thing I did want to mention is we, Greatly appreciate all the orders we've been getting through, Tam and, uh, Tom and Tammy and Nutmeg Notebook and Chef AJ, but we are extremely busy. We're doing the best that we possibly can under the circumstances to get orders out as quickly as possible. We mm -hmm. are about seven to 10 business days out on custom, like engraving orders off our website. Um, if you did need something sooner, just give us a call or note that in the customer notes, or you can always pick expedited shipping. But for the free shipping, it's going to be about seven to 10 business days. Okay. And then what about international orders, Corey? Yeah. Are you able to ship international? We are, definitely. We have a new uh, shipping method, UPS iParcel, which is awesome. We just got an order through one of your followers to Ireland, and oh. the shipping was only $27. And oh, then they that's not bad. They paid for um, um, customs, too, right on our website. So you, it's easy process once it ships from here it goes directly to the customer i think it was 27 dollars for the shipping and then 16 dollars for the taxes or so which is quite unbelievable with the the weight of the bowl and everything so we just did one to uk through one of your followers so yeah we can ship we can That's ship it awesome. we just shipped a set to dubai so we're we can uh canada we ship to all the time too Sure. So what is the length of time since things so have for to go the parcel shipping, which is by far the best rates, it does take a little bit longer, typically three to four weeks, but you save so much. I mean, if you didn't do that iParcel, it would have been over a hundred dollars for shipping. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, three to four weeks, it's worth it to wait. It is, exactly. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, I wanted to um did you have a sample of the ebonized? Yeah, love, yeah love the ebonized. That's one of my favorites, one of our most popular. Yeah, this is one of this is one of my favorite bowls. I love this bowl, you guys. It's so fun. And this is the one that you usually see on top of my Breville when we videotape and I have it full of um, tomatoes. It's just the perfect size for a couple pints of the little um, tomatoes. So when we get home from the grocery store, I'll go ahead and wash the tomatoes. I'll put them on a kitchen towel for them to dry and then I'll load them up in the bowl so that when I'm ready to eat them, they're just ready to go. Or if I'm, you know, want to chop them up to put them in something, they're ready to go. So, and he'll talk to you about how they do this um, process to turn it black on the outside and also on the edge. But I just love that. I just think it's so pretty. You Couple have a question? Couple questions while Corey's away. Is there a difference uh, or uh, in, I lost, I scrolled right off the screen. What are you cleaning your bowls with, Tammy? 
Yeah. So we just wash them in the sink and just like a little drop of um, dish soap. <clears throat> I'll just put a little bit of water in it, a little bit of dish soap. I never immerse the bowl because I, I don't think there's any reason for me to, to be washing the outside of it. So after I've made my salad and I, when I take my salad out of it to put it into the container I'm going to eat, I use a rubber spatula or a silicone spatula to do that and get as much out as I can. Just a little drop of dish soap, a little bit of warm water. I wash it, I rinse it, and, and then dry it I dry it immediately. I take a towel and I dry the inside, any water that got on the outside, I dry it. And then I set it on the counter and I let it sit on the counter for a couple of hours so that it can thoroughly dry before I put it away in my pantry. Is there any difference between have a nice one too. Oh, oh, beautiful. So it's a very minor look, the ebonizing process on the outside and then the natural cherry on the inside. So it's a uh, steel wool soaked in white distilled vinegar for 24 the hours. Here. The next uh -huh. thing you of the steel wool, you take that solution, apply it to the outside of the wood and the iron reaction gives it that beautiful jet black look and then the inside's a natural cherry. Okay, and, and does that- For chopping too. Okay, and does it wear well? Does it stay? It does, yeah. It's not, if anything, it'll darken color. It's not gonna wear at all. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's fantastic. Oh, I wanted uh, to show people okay. too that, um, what did I do with it? Oh. Well, she's looking for that. Go uh, ahead. I have a quick question I can answer here. TS is asking, is there any difference in using and washing a regular cutting board as opposed to the live edge cutting board? Uh, what's unique about the live edge cutting boards is the out, one of the outside edges was actually the outside edge of the tree. That's why they're calling it the live edge. It's where the bark used to be in contact. Can you hold me that little one up? Mm -hmm. And then what also is different on these that you, you will find not, you know, not in some retail, retail store. This is one original piece of wood. There's no glue. There's no seams. And exactly. even the bigger one here is a, a full cut board out, off of its original log. So these are not going to split. And come up. One piece, no glue. Yeah. 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 No. So, but but cleaning it would be and and oiling it would just be like any wooden cutting board. Mm -hmm. But what's different about these is this this natural edge, which is an aesthetic, you know, to 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 look interesting, and that you get all the grain of a single cut. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, most commercial cutting boards are are laminated uh, strips of wood. Uh, scraps. I'm gonna go grab my charger quick and for my computer. I'll be right there. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And then so then I just wanted to show you. So you know, children love to imitate what they see adults doing. And so our oldest granddaughter, she just um, is four, and she likes to make a chopped salad because she she knows I eat a chopped salad for lunch every day. And so I have a set of. Um, six of these bowls that go with my cherry salad bowl. And so she believes that this one here is hers. And then she has the little felt um, veggies mm -hmm. that she puts in it. And we gave her, this is a little pampered chef scraper. And so she'll get up at the counter and she pretends she goes like this and she pretends that she's making a chopped salad. So I just love it. So this is, this is sweet peas, little chopping bowl so that she can pretend she's making a chopped salad. She won't eat a chopped salad yet, but she will pick like all the fruit and things out of my bowl um, when I'm having a salad. Yes. Stephanie is asking if she has fruit in the bowl and unbeknownst to her, it goes bad and seeps liquid on the bowl and she doesn't discover it right away. Will that damage the wood? Okay, well, let, that's a really good question for Corey. And I can tell you that I have had that happen. Like I had a peach go bad at this in my tomato bowl. You can see there's a little dark spot in the bottom and that's because a tomato went bad, which of course- I could sand that out. You could sand it out, has a lot of acid in it. But what I have discovered happens is that over time it just will fade. And so as soon as I discovered it, of course, I you know um, emptied all the tomatoes out. I washed the bowl and it did leave a little bit of a dark um, stain in the bottom, but I have, I've had that happen like with a banana in here. I've had it happen with a peach and, you know, it just seems to fade as time goes by and then everything just blends in. So, but we'll ask Corey um, what he would say about that. And then there are these little bowls too that I just love. And so these are great to, you know, just put little condiments in when you're, um, like if you set up a build your own um, ice cream sundae bar, you can have 
you know, little um, coconut yeah, in one six and, inch bowl. and chocolate chips in another and uh, cacao nibs in another. They're yeah, just so great. So $100 or more gets one of these for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, the, and the wood selection on that is, is what, I, what I'm calling a surprise selection. Uh, this one looks like it might be cherry. Yeah, so you're free. This one looks like it might be beach. And so these came free with a bowl that we purchased in it. And it was a surprise selection. But this shows you, this is the, the walnut. This is the beech wood and this is the cherry. Those are six inch, which are perfect for like salsas, mm -hmm. you know, smaller items. And the yeah. seven inch, which Tammy also has, is perfect mm -hmm. for side salad. And that will be at the 150 mark and the 200 mark. Yep. Yeah, Corey, does engraving show up on the bottom of like the dark walnut bowls? How, how, how does it, it does? It's just not going to be as prominent as a, um, a lighter wood. The one okay. I was showing you, the walnut one, has sap wood on the bottom. Oh, so if you pick the two tone look, it's going to show up really well. If you do all dark, which is extremely popular, it'll still show up. It's just not going to be as prominent as a uh, lighter wood. Let me see if I have okay. One. All right. And here, this, I, the, I do have the heart bowl, you guys. And I love it because I love heart shaped things like heart shaped rocks. And, you, you know, I, I'm always attracted. And that makes a great banana bunch holder. It too. does. It holds a bunch of bananas just perfectly, or, you know, three large apples or five small apples or five peaches will fit in here um, beautifully. I like to give this as gifts. It makes a wonderful um, gift. And then I didn't have anything engraved on the bottom of this, but you could have something engraved on it if you want to give it as a gift too. And so that's a really fun bowl. And then this one, I love the shape of this one. And isn't that pretty? And Corey could tell us, I, is this a cherry bowl? That's cherry. So that's what we call our live edge collection. So that's the same idea as the boards. The bark was originally on the rim. We took the bark off. Uh -huh. Those are going to be more for serving a salad. Very popular, yeah. even as like a deco piece, like on the center of a dining room table. Yeah. Uh, How do you recommend the live edge for chopping just because of the depth of the bowl? It's just not going to be near yeah. as efficient as the uh, traditional round bowls. No, but I love it. I just, I love it for fruit. Oh, and fruit, I'll, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll put fruit out. Or, you know, if I'm setting up a buffet and we need chopped romaine um, for tacos, you know, you can put that in here or the sliced cabbage in here. I mean, it's just, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful bowl. So Corey, Tom, ask Corey oh. the question about if something goes bad in the bowl. Oh, he was away and, for that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we're talking about like if a peaches or, or uh, a tomato went bad in the bowl and stained the bottom of the bowl. I would think you could sand something like that out, but- is you, there... Yeah, you definitely can. You can sand it out yourself if you have the capabilities of doing it, but also we've had numerous customers, oh, had a fruit bowl, shoe, a tomato went rotten, they'll send it to us. We'll sand it and mm. refinish it for free. They just have to pay shipping both ways. Happens maybe a few times a year where we where we do that. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, excellent. That question um, was up here a little bit, so I don't remember who asked it, but, uh, but I think we've addressed that pretty well then. Okay. Um, how in the world do you turn the oval-shaped bowl? Do you have like a, a off-center lathe or something? <laughs> so it's the actual, if you're looking, if you're watching uh, the How It's Made video, It'll be on there. the link is actually turned backwards. So typically it would be bark side would be against the, away from the lathe. We flip the blank around and it's bark side first. If you're looking at the blank, you can kind of see the contour. I'll, I'll grab a exterior bark shell to give you guys idea. Give me one second. Cool. So much fun. All the different bowls. And this is, I just love my fruit bowl, but we need a second one because we have so, we buy so many bananas, you guys. Now that we have, you know, three grandkids, um, when we go to make the banana and ice cream and the champion juice. Go on. Oh, like, there you go. Exterior bark shell the bowl comes out of when we're turning the live edge collection. Oh. oh. So we sell these as planters. The first thing that comes off is this exterior bark shell. Then you'll see the outside of the largest bowl in house uh, for like tours and different things. We have, we sell them for $5 a piece. It's kind of a cool rustic planter. Yeah. That's very neat. Fun. I love it. What a cool thing. Kind of hard to explain too. The best thing is if you have time, just watch that video. It takes four to five minutes and it's really yeah. cool and kind of that gives you 
them. I think I watched a long time ago, but I just forgot. Yeah. And I love this too. I use yeah, this. The this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of times I'll use it kind of like a tray and, you know, also um, for displaying to put a variety of fruits out on it, or you can do nuts or. It I mean, holds our vegan cheese just yeah. fine because <laughs> we have some wonderful vegan cheese slices that we can put yeah. out yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great presentation. Then also, mm -hmm. it's a great deco piece. Like my wife has it on the centerpiece, the center of our dining room table. puts a vase on it, flowers, and the vase kind of a cool. Yeah. Um, How small do the fruit goals go? Because there's a discussion going on about well, maybe the tomatoes would be better kept in a in a in a smaller version of this. The What's twelve the inch is the yeah. smallest size. Um, okay. They're by far our most labor extensive product. If you go on our website, we have a video of showing how we do the fruit bowl. So say, starting with a bowl, a normal bowl like this, a 12 inch bowl, if there was a knot or a imperfection, say right here, that would be the starting drilling point. Then you hand drill each hole with the router pit. So they're very labor extensive. Yeah. Then you go in and sand each hole. So that's why they're a little bit more pricey, but. I've really never seen anything else like them on the marketplace. So they're very unique. And I, I love it. And people always ask about it when they come in. But you guys, I've been using this bowl for, um, I don't know, two or three years for tomatoes. And I've only just recently had a tomato that went bad in it. So, um, but Tom can sand that out or I'll just let it fade because normally it's full of tomatoes. So it's not going to show. And Corey, somebody asked about... Um, uh, before the show started, somebody was asking us about the plates. If you want to talk about the wood yeah, plates, so which I love. Styles. The one that Tammy's holding is our six and a half inch thinner plate, which is going to be more ideal for like appetizers, dessert, smaller. The other ones are 10 inch plate. Like I was just over at my sister's house last weekend for a dinner party. We served, ate our entire meal off the, that plate. They wash up very easily. So many people are getting away from plastic and China and wanting to switch to wood. So they're everyday plates or people use them as char they can be used as chargers too. Yeah. And I love them. And it does, it washes up really, really well, you guys. Uh, so um, I've posted pictures of my dinner on these and then, and they come in the different dark wood. walnut finish. And then we also have the natural finish, which is going to be lighter. Mm -hmm. They're just 24 they're 50 uh, per plate. Very popular. I love them. They're gorgeous. What size bowl do you keep our tomatoes in? I think this is a nine inch. Nine inch. Yeah. yeah. Nine and, inch. and it does. I mean, we very, we eat them within a week or so. So we've only mm -hmm. had them go bad just the one time. Yeah. And I'm, I have tomatoes in it all the yeah, time. Yeah. We're not going to keep cherries in a 12 inch. Uh, tomatoes. Uh, in a 12 inch. Uh, no, this is a, bowl. this, this holds like the big um, container that you can get of the little salad tomatoes from Costco. It, it'll fit in here. So um, I wanted to uh, give people a heads up that I put the link for Holland Bowl Mill down in the description. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a cell phone, you have to hit that teeny tiny little chevron down arrow to the right of the description of the video. Uh, and then it opens up the information. I didn't learn that until fairly recently. Somebody's asking, what, what's this description you keep talking about? I never see it. Well, <laughs> you know, on the Apple phone anyway, it's this tiny, teeny, tiny little arrow and it helps some. And then on a PC based or, or um, tablet based uh, PC is show more. And then there's a whole long write up in there that, that Tammy had me do and all of our links, but uh, specifically on top, I'm going to go check It's the Holland Bowl Mill link, mm -hmm. which is now changed. We, we changed it just for the sake of ease of memory as on Holland Bowl Mill forward slash dot com forward slash nutmeg. Uh, it used to be uh, affiliate ID equals one because we were his first affiliate. So um, anyway, so, but I asked Corey to, to make it something a little bit more tangible uh, and, and easier for me to, to quote to people. So that yeah. link is in the description. Definitely. Another thing too, if anyone ever has any questions, there's more comfortable place in order over the phone. That's another great thing. We love talking to you directly will answer any questions. Myself, my sister, Krista, yeah. Larissa, Macy, they'd be more than happy to help you out with the order over the phone. We're here uh, Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30, and then Saturdays from 10 to 3.30. Um, give us and a you call. do tours too, right? So if anybody- yeah, loves, retail, yeah, we have a retail store right on site that we kind of started this uh, live stream in, and then we do free tours 9 to 12 and 12.30 to 3. No appointment needed. 
we've had numerous people come in from nutmeg note from your followers who've yeah. come in from the tours and purchased in, in store which has been so much fun just a, such a small world that they you know come in which has been and great. i'm jealous of all those people who've been oh, able every to time get there they, they send us pictures out here yeah. I know. I, we want to. Okay. Yeah. After the pandemic, I know. When, we, when we can travel again, I would really love to come love, and just love to host you guys. Yeah, I'd like to watch them. Yeah. Watch some bowls being made and see it's the a great vacay town too. Holland's right on Lake Michigan, right on the lake shore. It's yeah, a, she was she was working me last January before everything uh, went with the, with the pandemic, but we were scheduled to be in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, I remember that. Yes. So, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and she was, well, it's only four and a half hours yeah. to Holland, Michigan from Cleveland because we were no. going there for the National Health Association's conference. Uh, I was like, we can rent a car and go yeah. meet Corey and see yeah. the factory. And I, I told her we need to add another entire day to our trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another hotel room to pull that off. Maybe so. next year, Corey. Yeah, I look forward to it. I hope so. Okay. So any more questions? Uh, there, Tiffany Tom? was wondering how long it took you to collect all of these bowls. It's a couple years worth of work, I a think. A few years, yeah. The, the three, first bowl was like years or so, four years. Yeah, okay. three, four years I've been um, collecting Yeah, them. Our, our very original bowl, the one that we bought off of Amazon. Uh, is that our daughter's is, house? Yeah, we, we, yeah we, our daughter has already inherited it. So it's proof <laughs> that it's an heirloom bowl because it's already been inherited now. Yeah. Um, and it may go on to our grandchildren as well. But uh, it was a, a, a very durable, plain, simple, clean looking bowl. Uh, it didn't it didn't have as much character as the ones that we see coming directly from the yes. factory. Oh, and Corey, you missed it when you were off getting things. I was showing this is our oldest granddaughter's chopping bowl. She has oh, yes. commandeered this. And so she has her little felt vegetables and then we gave her this is just a little it's called a pan scraper from pampered chef and so she uses this this is her mezzaluna and then she pretends that she's chopping a yeah, salad. i remember you telling me that she loves watching you guys chop your salad she does and now she does it her now start, she makes her start own. Young. that's good <laughs> absolutely okay another question gs has got a great question can all vegetables be cut in the bowl like whole hard carrots apples along with the very different soft softer vegetables oh well I think so, because when when I do a chopped salad, I have one where I like to put mandarin oranges and apple in it and chop that up. And that seems to work really well. I don't know if I want to do a great big like hard carrot that would be, you know, tough on my wrist and my hand. What do you think, Corey? I mean, you could, but I think it might mark the bowl up a little bit more just because of the force you would have to use with the chopper. I mm -hmm. would say you'd be better doing that like on a some plastic uh, cutting board to the side and then adding it to your salad. You yeah. could, yeah. but I wouldn't recommend that. One, one, one tip that, uh, that Tammy taught me early on, because we do add the uh, cherry tomatoes to every single salad. Yeah. And Tammy taught me to take those cherries off, you know, because we pre, we pre assemble our salads, you know, for the whole week, but we pull all the cherry tomatoes off and then, and hold them carefully. And we gently slice those cherry tomatoes in half so that when we're chopping and you hit it, it can it just pops and sprays tomato stuff everywhere. So we actually pre-cut that half you know, six or yeah, eight. But I use a little paring knife. I don't use the mezzaluna. Oh, do oh, oh no, I don't use that mezzaluna when I'm cutting. Or you do it on uh, a board and then put them in. Yeah, those I little tomatoes. Right no way. I'm not getting that blade that close to my. Uh-uh. To my. <laughs> that, that would be too sharp. Okay. And when I'm cutting. You know, I'm right-handed, so I use my right hand, and I make sure that I keep my left hand just on the on the edge of the bowl, so that I don't accidentally cut myself. And I did drop this down in uh, some hot, soapy dishwater one time, one time, because I reached in and I grabbed it by the blade and I cut my fingers. And so I no longer do that. Plus, I shouldn't have done it anyway because of the wood the handle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I, you know. But sometimes we learn the hard way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Kat, Catherine is asking if the cherry bowl was originally treated with beeswax, is there any issue with switching over to just using the mineral oil, mineral oil for no, future? Not treatment? at all. Nope. It's going to make no difference at all. Okay. Um, Karen is asking, Tammy, maybe this was for you. Would you recommend not putting salad dressing uh, and or vinegars in the bowl? Corey? Uh, say that one more time. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. What about putting salad dressings and or vinegars in the bowl? You, you definitely can. I mean, hundred percent. Yeah, we do. I mean, if I'm serving a salad, I put my dressing directly into the bowl. Um, one thing is 
olive oil, like some people think you can treat a bowl with olive oil, definitely not. <laughs> That's going to go rancid. But if you're doing yeah. a vinaigrette dressing or any, yeah, put it right in the bowl. There's nothing wrong with that one bit. If anything, it helps kind of treat the bowl a little bit too. It's um, nothing's wrong with that. Yeah, I do my vinegar. I'll put vinegar right in the bowl and then toss the salad with it. And I haven't noticed that it's caused any kind of problem. Okay, bye Randy. Thanks for being here. Randy's <laughs> got to run. Thanks Randy. Yeah, not you, Corey, you're still here. Yeah, the one thing, if you do the ebonized bowl, we've had a few times for some reason, the lemon react, like lemon juice reacts differently to the ebonizing process where it's taken that off a little bit. So just be careful with lemon juice with the ebonized bowls. Okay, good to know. Okay. Tom's gonna scan for any more Which questions. Which bowl do you prepare? Uh, this is from, for Tammy, from, um, from uh, Joanna's Robbins. Okay, Which so, bowl do you prepare your chopped salad in? Yeah, so I use the 15 inch cherry, which is this one here. And I, I love it. And Tom uses this 15 inch beech wood. And, um, and this one is like two, two years old, I think. And this one is like a little over a year old. Yeah, this one's from 2018. 2018. So this one's two, almost three years You're old. Up and, oh, sorry, two, almost three years old. And it gets used every day as well as this one gets used every day. So, um, and I just wanted a, a pretty cherry one just because I'm looking at it every day. And sometimes I will, you know, use it if I have extra um, fruit overflow, um, I'll use it for the extra fruit overflow as well. Okay. And then uh, this one is a cherry bowl too. And this was a set that I ordered last year when I was turning 60. And I also got um, six of the little serving bowls, seven inch bowls yeah. to go with it. And you can, you know, get as many of those as you want, enough for your family, and then also the serving utensils, so I can serve out of this. But I'll chop in this bowl, and I serve out of this one because I just, I just love the look of this bowl. It's so beautiful. Tam is very fussy about her presentations. <laughs> as many of you that watch her follow her on Instagram, you get to benefit from that. Yeah, but I just, I wanted, you know, just to have just one bowl that I didn't chop in that would just stay pristine. And so that's this one and, and I love it. And then I'll chop the salad and then I'll move it into this bowl. And then you guys know how I love to decorate the tops of them. And it just makes for such a beautiful presentation. And then it's really fun to have all the little bowls and, you know, and they're all different. They all look a little bit different. So it, it's really fun. And maybe one day I'll, um, get bowls and have all the kids and the grandkids names put on the bottom of them. I think that would be fun. That would be. Yeah. But then they'll probably want to take them home and I won't want them to. Yes, take them exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Tom's just scanning to see if we have any, anything that, that I have forgotten to ask you, Corey. Um, anything you want to no, add? I think we've covered mostly everything. Um, again, we, we've heard that you have some square plates now for a more contemporary look. You say that again. We heard that you had no, they have square bowl. They're kind of like a oh, square a bowl. bowl. Yeah, yeah. I can grab, let me grab one of those so I can show everyone. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, they just have such a huge wide variety. You really have to go on the website and look at all the different products that they have because there's just, there's so many different things to choose from, but they do make really amazing gifts, especially since you can personalize them. And if you want the, um, the, uh, holder for the Mezzaluna Nice, I would go ahead, if you're ordering, placing an order now, I would go ahead and order it so that you have the free shipping, so that you get it with the, with the free shipping. Because once you get this at home, you're probably going to wish that you had gotten the little holder for it, just so that you have a safe place. Or wait until you're going to order a second bowl. Or wait or until you're going to order a second bowl or something, right. Yeah. Just so you can take advantage of the, um, of the free shipping. So this is our four corners. Oh. oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, it's got really kind of modern, cool look. Most popular as a fruit bowl. Yes. Bowl, kind of a deco conversation piece. Um, yeah, kind of okay. Let me go, well, you could do like a big candle um, holder in the center. You yeah, could do- that's very popular, stuff. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's gorgeous. Really nice. Very pretty, okay. I like it. Well, our time with 
uh, we're going to talk a little bit about sharpening and, and maintenance of the knife after uh, after Corey gets on his way. So do we have anything else for Corey before we lose him here? Yeah, if anybody has another question for Corey, go ahead and put it in the chat right now because he has um, uh, to get going here. And we just can't oh. thank you enough for giving us this time so, today, yeah, Corey. Uh, Jesse's asking if you can if you would ship a large bowl and then the planter log that it came out of <laughs> to California. Yeah. But they, the, those get quite heavy. So it might be a lot of posting. A little bit of a, a shipping up charge if we've done it before, but they're, they're quite heavy. You might need to drive to Michigan. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure you've got room in your trunk of your car <laughs> and then um, haul that back. Now there is there are a couple of plant-based truckers. We should find out if they ever go through or near Holland, Michigan. Set up a, a, and a, then we a, can a, set up and yeah, we could have them pick up a big yeah, order. A relay network to bring, of truckers yeah, to bowls around the country. Yeah, to yeah. bring to California. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Corey, do you just want to remind the folks of what the specials are and how long um, how long they have to take advantage of the specials? Yes, so all the specials we're running are valid for 30 days. That's for the free bowls. The free six inch bowl will be included with any order over $100. If you hit the 125 mark, you get that free Mezzaluna knife, which is a $20 value. Once you get up to 150, you upgrade to a seven inch bowl. And then if you hit $200, you get another seven inch bowl. Mm -hmm. And so if you hit $200, you get two free seven inch bowls plus the free Mezzaluna knife. And uh, yeah, that all needs to be ordered through the hollandbowlmill.com forward slash nutmeg. And again, those specials will not show up in your cart, but I promise you, if you got to our site through the link uh, Tammy and Tom provide, you will get those um, for free. And again, if anyone ever has any questions, we're always here to assist you. Just give us a call. We can help you with the order over the phone. Um, stay away from ordering in the chopping bowl category. If it's a over $125. Since you're getting that knife for free, you want to order just the bowl. Once you click on a listing, there'll be a text box to the right that says engraving. That's where you enter in what you would like engraved. That goes on the underside of the bowl at no extra cost. Um, the Mezzaluna knife holder, which is an additional $20 cost, can be, be found on our homepage under the featured products or also in the chopping bowl category. Those are $20. We do them in cherry and walnut. Dependent on what bowl you order, we'll match up the holder to go with that bowl. Very good. Okay, Very good. and just so you guys know, the um, when you use our affiliate link for Holland Bowl, even after the thirty days, if you have a minimum one hundred and twenty-five dollar order, you get the free Mezzaluna knife. That's always so, running that. Yep. Mm -hmm, that's always going to be there, and so and if you want to order it as a gift and have it direct shipped, you can do that as well. So a month from today is the 23rd of next month, which is a Friday. So do we wanna close things off on midnight Friday the 23rd or, yes, or let's midnight? Run, let's actually run this through the- to Saturday? Through October. Just through to make October. I'll run this through October, um, okay. through Halloween. And then after Great. that, we'll lose the free bowl specials, but the free knife will carry over. Okay, that okay. sounds All right. wonderful. We'll, we'll send out a reminder notice then yeah. Yeah. to, to uh, make sure if people have it like on a wish list and want to come back to it. Uh, a comment from, um, okay, from Stephanie Spear. No question for you, Corey, but just wants to say that she loves your products. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. And you've so, got one question down here. From Mary, how long is the turnaround time for shipping? Uh, they have a birthday pretty soon. So if an order went in tonight, tomorrow, so um, what if, part of the country, Mary? So we're seven to 10 days out on free shipping. But again, if they just call us, say they have a birthday next Friday, they give us a call. I can move that order up or they can always pick expedited shipping or during checkout in the customer note section. They leave us a date, say, hey, I need this to arrive by a certain day. Obviously, it has to be realistic. If it's going to California, that's four day free shipping. So we need to have at least four to five days to make that happen. Otherwise okay. you would have to potentially do like second day or uh, three day or something like that. 
Yeah, so for that that discussion might be a phone call then uh, to the customer service department call, and work it out. The best way to handle that, just to ensure that we get delivery to you in time and that we're all on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, TC, I wanna address a question from TC. Uh, for for ordering this bowl and getting the free mezzaluna knife, what Corey's saying is to not go to the chopping bowl category. That's for people that don't have the nutmeg notebook connection. Uh, those or folks if they're under that, $125. Yeah, or under $125. But to get the free knife, you just go to the bowl section and choose your wood. If it's $125 or more, then you get the knife. So, and, and that's a common misunderstanding that okay. we, and we do in our, in our blog posts and our videos, we'll say, don't go to the chopping bowl section, just go to the bowl section. Well, what you do is you choose your wood. So there's, so yeah. You, you go on shop and then you choose, choose your wood. wood. You look at, you choose cherry or, yeah. or the um, beech wood or the walnut or the, um, you know, so that's how, that's how that works. And then you look at the bowls that are within that. Oh, what, okay. so, what type all sizes will be available? The 12 inch, oh. 15, 17, 20. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's no difference in the bowls. They're all exactly the same. They're, you just... Okay. Um, Mary, Mary that had the birthday bowl shipping question is in Kansas City, so she's going to actually give you guys a call and work it out, okay? Yeah, Kansas uh, City is only uh, one or two day shipping, so that would be a pretty quick turnaround. That should okay. be no issue. Just tell her to... Uh, See, Mary, there are advantages Mary, to living in the Give us a Midwest. call tomorrow, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, Carrie, thank you so much. Um, oh, Jesse's telling me Mary is in Missouri. Um, okay. All right. Well, Corey, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been really fun and special. And I, I hope that we answered everybody's questions. And yeah. we're um, going to continue with some knife sharpening conversation and anything else our, our uh, community has here. But thank yeah. you for being with us. Yeah, it's Thanks, been so uh, Tammy. Thank you, Tom. Thank you to all your followers for joining us today. And uh, we do greatly appreciate everyone and their support for our business. And means the world to us and it keeps us going each day and uh again thank you so much okay. you're welcome stay safe and, and have then, and everybody have else hang weekend. on when Corey drops off we don't exactly know what's going to happen on our <laughs> zoom call because this is our very first zoom interview call so we're <laughs> we're finding out what happens you know i i noticed it stayed split screen the whole time on youtube i thought it would go oh, back and forth to whoever was talking i think I, you have to select that i thought i selected that we're on a learning curve right. here with so when you wait, it, so if, if we go Thanks, silent, Corey. we'll come back. All yeah. right. See ya. Bye everyone. Take Bye, care. Corey. Bye, yeah. Corey. All right. So now we'll we'll see what's gonna happen here. Oh, okay. it just went to me. Yay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think we're okay. I think we're doing good. Yes. So well, that was a lot of fun. If there's any questions that I can answer for you guys. So if you're watching for the first time and you don't know about chocolate. We can take our earbuds out. Since oh, can Corey we take our oh great. Because mine kept falling out constantly. Okay, I'm gonna unplug you. Okay, I'll go ahead and unplug me. I'll have to just leave them here, I guess, because they, yeah. they, we ran them up. Well, I can pull them out. You can pull them out. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic trick. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo>. Okay. <laughs> So if you if you don't know about chopped salads, so um, I'm not going to chop one for you, but I'm just going to show you uh, what we do. Jesse says, whoopee, we're all back in one piece. We are in one piece now. So I batch prep my salads. There's a little piece of lettuce here. I batch prep my salads uh, once a week and I'll make a, like a dozen of them for the week. So here you go. This is what it is. And we just take this, we take the tomatoes and we do... Um, cut those in half with a paring knife. And then we just dump the whole salad in the bowl. And then we use the mezzaluna knife and we chop up the salad. And it just makes it taste so much better because then you get the flavor of all of the vegetables in every single bite. It also makes the the salad more moist. And so it requires less salad dressing or less vinegar than it does when it's a great big salad. And it just seems to um, 
your salad dressing or the vinegar that you're using just seems to coat everything much better. You know, when it's, when the salad's in big pieces, you know, one piece will have a ton of vinegar or a ton of dressing on it. And the next bite might be kind of dry. And that doesn't happen with the chopped salad. It also reduces the volume of it. So it makes it much easier to eat a large quantity of greens. And we know we need to be eating more vegetables, right? That's where we're getting all those phytonutrients and antioxidants. And if you add a little bit of fruit to the salad as well, I've also discovered that you need less dressing or less vinegar because the fruit adds flavor, sweetness, and moisture also to the salad. So, um, so we just prefer now to have chopped salads. We started eating salads once a day as one of our meals. That's a principle that Dr. Joel Furman teaches. And his book, the Eat to Live book was the first plant-based doctor's book that I read. And that was back in like 2012 when I read that, adopted um, a plant-based lifestyle in 2013. And I have been eating a salad for one of my meals every day for the past seven years. And then, and Tom, probably a year or so into me doing that, he adopted that as well. And you need to add starch to them. Otherwise they're not filling and satisfying. So we're not just eating, you know, um, about a pound of vegetables, we add starch to it. So you can add beans or lentils or peas or potatoes or rice or quinoa or sweet potatoes. I make these delicious sweet potato croutons. Um, you know, you can just make uh, every salad taste different if you want. I'm particularly fond of the Mexican chopped salad and we have a YouTube video on that. In fact, that's what I had for lunch today before we interviewed Corey. It's one of my favorite salads, but then I also love the Japanese sweet potato croutons. And this time of year, chopped apple and some mandarin oranges with the chopped salad and those croutons and some pomegranate seeds, if you can get a hold of some, makes for one of the most amazing salads. So those are like two of my most favorite salads ever. Um, and, I, and I have those a lot. So question. Uh, Marsha is asking, what size are those salad containers that we store the salads in that you had out Yeah, earlier? those are Ziploc containers. They are nine cup Ziploc containers and they sell them like at Target and Walmart. Sometimes you can find them um, at like the um, drug store, the grocery fails. store. And if all, if all that fails, they do have them on Amazon as well. On our page. So, yes. Is, I have them in our shop. Yes. So they come in different bundles, like you can buy two, a pack of two or a pack of four. Yeah. And we have about, I don't know, 20 of them, I think, because we also use them for a lot of other things too, because Beans, they stack. Potatoes, yeah. Sweet potatoes. And they stack, which is really nice because as you can see in the refrigerator. Oh, we're going to the fridge. Yeah. We're getting low, but you see how they, they stack. Can they, can they see? Yeah. And so, so there you can see we have more in there. So it's time to, um, usually on Thursday, we grocery shop, but of course we didn't have time to do that today. Um, but usually on Thursday, we grocery shop and then over the weekend or Friday, I will batch prep the salad. So Ziploc nine cup containers, and those will hold um, like a pound's worth of um, fresh veggies. And I have a video on how to batch prep salads. And then there's- Stephanie's echoing that prepping the salads ahead is crucial to succeeding through the week and getting them chopped and eaten. It is because I would not drag everything out every day to make salads, not with all the ingredients that we like to put in them. And so if I have them made ahead of time, one, I don't want those to go to waste. And so I know I need to eat one of those every day. So that, you know, keeps me on track because I've made them. They need to be eaten. I've spent the money and I've spent the time to prep those. And, um, <laughs> and then if I start waffling and thinking I'm going to go grab a something else, one of my rice and bean burritos or something. And then she says, you know, there's still five salads in there. <laughs> and you have to help eat them. <laughs> and so I, I have, a, a do I shame you into it? A momentary a guilt attack. And then I, then I do the right thing. So, yes. so having them prepped in advance is, is definitely. Well, and you hate to waste food. So he's from a family of eight people, six kids, and he can't stand for any food to be 
wasted. And so um, that's an incentive too. And it saves money because then that produce doesn't go to waste. We don't buy it and then just have it go rotten in the refrigerator. You know, my mom was a depression era, depression era kid. Mm -hmm. And so she instilled the waste not want not into our heads pretty strongly. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. And also um, just knowing that I'm going to have that we each are going to have a salad for one meal a day, that's 14 meals that we don't have to think about. That's 14 meals that we know are just going to be salads. And so we don't have to think about it. So the more that you can um, make this easy, the, the less hassle it is. So I just believe in making, you know, um, making every, doing, working smarter, not harder, I guess, is what I want to say. And just by doing that, it just, it simplifies everything. So, and Tom eats the same breakfast every day. So that's two meals a day that he doesn't even have to think about. What is he going to have? Because mm -hmm. it's automated. That's the word I couldn't think of. Um, when you automate your menu and your lifestyle, it just, it makes it so much easier. So some people would say that that doesn't have enough variety for them, but sometimes variety can be the kiss of death for some of us um, who struggle with our weight. So, and I will say that I believe that the chopped salads or just having a salad, it didn't even have to be chopped in the beginning because I wasn't eating a chopped salad when I first adopted a plant-based lifestyle, but I was eating a big salad with starch um, for one meal a day that really helped me lose weight, even though I'm hypothyroid, you know, I was over 50 when I started eating this way. And it certainly is a big part of my being able to maintain my weight because I'm getting in that large volume of vegetables every day. And I think, you know, it also contributes to having better health. Thank you. You're welcome. A couple of things um, on the shop page. Uh, this is for Mary Davidson. Go to the box. Uh, she went to utensils, and I don't have the Ziplocs in there. They're in the category uh, says influencer. Um, it's where you get to see the whole page. Yeah, it's all of the things are in the influencer box. I have one for appliance, small appliances. I have one for utensils and gadgets, and then the uh, the third box says influencer, and all of the miscellaneous stuff is in that. And we didn't name that. That's what Amazon named that box. I wish I could rename it to like everything or all together or everything everything else. in in the so, kitchen sink so the ziplocs are in that section on the amazon forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook page and um yeah and and then all of our favorite books and stuff are in there as well okay i also wanted to tell you guys to check your box carefully when it comes because there are instruction cards that come with the Holland Bowl. So um, on this little instruction card, it gives you instruction use for the chopping bowl and the mezzaluna knife. And it also gives you care instructions on how to care for the mezzaluna knife and, um, and how to care for the bowl. Plus we also, I guess that doesn't show up very good because it's white. We also have a video on how to care for the bowl. And then you were also going to talk to them about how to sharpen the knife. Okay. Um, but do you have more questions there? Yeah, we have a couple more questions. Okay, I'll just um, put that there have, for you. Uh, Carol Lee's asking, have you ever found nine cup um, glass bowls? It's I so have not. And that's why I'm still using the plastic is because I have not found anything big enough. Um, I should say that's affordable. Uh, to substitute for the plastic. And so we do not put these in the dishwasher. We always hand wash these because that helps um, prevent the plastic from breaking down. And if, but if you put them in the dishwasher, that can, the heat from the dishwasher can cause the plastic to break down um, more rapidly. And so we always hand wash them and we don't um, heat them up ever, even though I think it does say that they are microwave safe. We never put these mm -hmm. in Wait. the microwave. Okay. Um, Marsh has got a question about this. this. This is one serving in this nine cup container. It's not a full pound. It's like, 13. no, I'm making these about, about 13 ounces right now because yeah. I was getting so that I couldn't eat the whole pound once because we add a lot of stuff to it. Like sometimes I'll add 
Um, I don't put things like cucumbers, things that would get soggy or yeah. beets or By anything like that. By the time you're like done, it's over pond, but you know, it's loosely packed in here. And this is yeah. like about, I made these last Friday or yeah. Saturday. Yeah, and they're still fine. And so, and they're still great. They still look yeah. great. So, but that is, to be clear, and we get that question a lot. This is one serving and it chops down. For us. Yeah, for us. But that doesn't mean that that's a serving for you. You, you know, like Chef AJ makes, um, she says that she makes even bigger salads than what I eat. This is just what works for us. So I, I do weigh these when I make them just to try to make them so that they're all even. And I weighed them out about 13 ounces now. When you watch the video at that time, when we made the video, I was making these a pound each. But then by the time we add our, all of our toppings to it, Tom weighed one for me the other day and it weighed two pounds. And so, I mean, that that's a lot of food and that's starting with just 13 ounces. But you go with the size that works for you. Some people eat bigger salads than this, believe it or not. And some people would eat less. For some couples, this would make two salads. So we're not saying you need to make the size that we do. We're just sharing what we do. And then, um, you know, you can uh, make it fit for your lifestyle. I'm going to stick this so back we've got in the these, fridge. We've got some questions that came in early. We haven't dealt with those yet, right? Um, um, we may have answered them. Okay. Because, um, because, uh, Betsy was asking 15 inch or 17 inch and Corey talked about that. Tom and I do those 13 ounce salads or a whole pound of salad, which is what I'll do when we're having company. I'll usually make two of them. If we're having company, I'll chop two salads. I'll do one at a time, but a one pound salad will chop in a 15 inch bowl perfectly. If you are making smaller salads, you might be able to get by with the 12 inch, but it's not as deep. And so some people have bought it and think it's great. And other people tell me that they regret it and wish they'd gotten a 15 inch. So it depends on how big your salad is. But you, if that's what is affordable for you, what you can do is you can chop your salad in two batches if you need to. You can put half the salad in that 12 inch bowl and, um, and then chop it. But we find that the 15 inch gives, gives, us, depth gives us depth the salad in the bowl because he said these are, um, did he say four and a half inches deep? And the 17 inch was five and a half inches deep, I think. Yeah. Um, it probably tells on the website. I'm, I think I have that right. And so it gives us plenty of room to put a pound that container of salad. fits in there perfectly. It fits in there and we can chop it without any of it flying out. And so, um, and this will still store in my pantry on it my pantry. On the shelf. It fits on the shelf where a 17 inch would not. I wouldn't have any place in my kitchen except on top of my refrigerator. I thought you were going to say head. Oh, <laughs> where I could store it. Or you could, like if you have an island or a dining room table, or if you have space where you could put a big 17 inch out, um, you know, or if you have a deeper pantry shelves than I do, then that might work. And I know AJ says that she prefers the 17 inch, but we've been using a 15 inch for years and we love it. Um, okay. I think. You cut up with those? Yep. What veggies are you adding to your salad greens? So I have and a you video. you also add beans and greens. Yeah. I, so I have a video all about the chopped salads. So if you Google chopped salads, nutmeg notebook, all of our videos and all of blog our posts. blog posts should come up for you. Also follow me on Instagram or, and that's as nutmeg notebook or on Facebook as nutmeg notebook, at least five times a week, I post pictures of what I eat in a day and I post my salads and I give you details of everything that I have in the salad, unless I have a video that tells you. So the Mexican chopped salad, I give you the link to go to the um, blog to look at the Mexican chopped salad, where it tells you everything that I put in it. And so, and it's whatever you like. Yeah. Uh, Jesse's asking is, you know, what veggies do you add to your green salad? Do you also add beans and grains to your salads? Yeah, I, you have I put, to have starch. put beans and rice and corn goes into regardless of what salsa or, or, or uh, dressing I might be using, but every salad gets some beans and some rice and some corn. And I change up the beans. I'll use pinto one day, black beans. I've got a nice pinto black bean, kidney bean mix we found mm -hmm. at Costco recently. I've been enjoying that. 
Uh, Tammy gets, she'll, she'll do more citrusy things and I like uh, fruit. peppery things. You don't, and, you and don't add fruit to yours. Although yeah. if I'm making a salad for both of us, then, you know, I'll add beets or I'll add apple or I'll add some mandarins or um, I like garbanzo beans are like one of my favorite beans and I'll add yeah. those. But if, if I'm making an Italian one, then I might do garbanzo beans and sun-dried tomatoes and um, fresh basil. And if you add fresh herbs to the salad, it makes them really amazing. But, um, but we have lots of uh, blog posts, videos, um, and, and then check out my Facebook and Instagram, what I ate in a day for lots of chopped salad mm -hmm. ideas. And then on Saturday, um, Saturday morning, I will post a super salad Saturday post on my Facebook, not make notebook, Facebook page. And underneath that, lots of people post pictures of their favorite salad from the week and they post the ingredients. And sometimes they'll post a recipe for the salad dressing that they put in it. So you want to look for that um, on Saturdays on the Facebook page, because that's a great place to go for salad inspiration. And you can add anything to it that you want, but you definitely need to add starch to it so that it's filling and satisfying. Uh, Monica is mentioning that Sh Chef AJ has a saying, something, the seven S is something salad, starch, sweet, salty, savory, specialty sauce equals dressing. There you go. So, so uh, that, and your salad, your salads pretty much live up to that. Do but it, it just depends on what you like. Add the things that you like. Yeah. And, um, we don't chop the salad until the day we're going to eat the salad. And I prefer it within a few hours of when I'm going to eat it, because once you chop it, it starts to break down. And especially once you add like your salad dressing or your vinegar. So like if I'm going to take it with me to my daughter's house, um, no, I don't know that number. Somebody's trying to call. Um, if I'm going to take it to a, our daughter's house, I'll chop my salad early in the morning. I'll put it in my lunch cooler with the little blue ice packs, but I won't add the vinegar usually until lunchtime because the vinegar is an acid and that will start to break the lettuce down. And I don't want it to get wilty. I want it to stay good until I eat it. So we don't chop the salads until it's the day that we're going to eat them. And if you wait to add the vinegar or the salad dressing, it's best. Um, Stephanie is asking, do you heat up the beans or the rice or just add them cold to the salad? It depends on what you want. If I'm making my Mexican salad, like how Tom does. Mine is usually hot. We, I prefer we the heat beans that and up. rice and corn heated up. I almost always have a, a hot Mexican salad. And Tammy will often have a, a, for her lunch a cold salad. Mm -hmm. But Maybe. sometimes I'll take my beans, corn, and rice separate. And then I'll heat that up in the microwave and then dump that on top of my salad hot. So it just, it depends on what it is. For the one with the um, Japanese sweet potato croutons, then I will add cold garbanzo beans and, um, you know, have everything cold in it. And, um, on, and it, so it just depends. And sometimes I like a, like a couple ladles of hot chili over a chopped salad or my hearty lentil vegetable stew. I actually really like that served hot over a chopped salad. It is so good, you guys. And I need to start making it. It's just like today, it's really starting to feel like fall here. The temperatures are a little more mild. There's just a little crispness in the air. And so it kind of feels like fall. And speaking of fall, I want to remind you guys that I did the recipe spread for the health science magazine that's coming out in October. In October. So pretty soon. Make so sure you're signed up. Make sure you're, yes. So you need to get the magazine. I actually, I have two new recipes that are in that. And I, um, yesterday I got two lovely emails, um, one from um, an editor. And I, I think the other gal, she, she does like the layout of the um, photos and the recipes in the magazine. And they both wrote to me to tell me that one of them said that she has already made, there's an apple crisp recipe and she's already made the apple crisp three times and the other gal wrote to tell me that the lentil loaf um, with the date glaze and that recipe is on the blog but she has already made it twice for her husband and they're her. jumping ahead and cheating I know <laughs> and then the magazine hasn't even been published yet and she said the last time she made it she made a double batch so she made two lentil loaves and froze one of them and they've already eaten it 
And so they just said, we just want you to know that we are loving the recipes and the magazine hasn't even come out yet. So, um, so you, you can um, subscribe to the, um, do you have the link to put in the show notes? for the health science magazine. It's already there. It's, it's already it's there. Down, you know, there's quite a bit of uh, write up in the show notes, but if you scroll down, you'll find- uh, You can go to the national- yeah, healthscience.org, yes. National Health Association link is there to, to it's click on. It's $35 for a year. year subscription, and that will get you um, four magazines that they put out. And access to the online and library. And access, access to the online library of all the past magazines. And so it's all about, um, plant-based living, and they have all the wonderful doctors that we all enjoy listening to, write articles, and there's always um, somebody's transformation. Yeah, Brittany in there. Giuliani's recipes were in there on the last yes. on the summer issue. Yeah, our friend um, Shada Soleimani, she did one of the recipe spreads. Um, so it's just really fun. And it's a great magazine. We've subscribed for the past year to it, and we really enjoy the Look magazine. Forward to getting it. And, and sometimes there's plant people we know in there. It's fun to see. Yes. And hopefully maybe we'll meet some of you if the, um, they are planning on having a convention next, next year, next year. And so hopefully everything will work out so that we can all be there. And we're planning on attending, um, the national health association. If, if we are convention. able, yeah. If we're able, as long as, you know, if the stars all align and everything goes as we hope it does. Okay. Let's talk about sharpening real quick. Okay. Here. Let's talk about sharpening. All right. So, and this was um, uh, Sally. Oh, and there's some, yeah, and, and on the live here too. That want to know. Yeah. Okay. And so, also there is a video. In one of our lives, you did in the video, you showed how to sharpen. Yeah. And I can't, I can't tell you which one that was okay. right now. We don't know. So anyway, I started out with this. There's a bazillion ways to sharpen any blade. And, and there are some folks that are absolute artists and perfectionists on how that happens. I am not one of those people. I just want to cut my salad. So, <laughs> so anyway, this, this particular uh, blade is beveled on both sides. And so that's very forgiving in terms of sharpening that way. Ulu knives often are beveled only on one side and that makes them just a little bit trickier. But this one, I started out, you know, trying to do this, but you can see, I have to make sure that my thumb is not sticking up there. So this, this uh, is also slow and tedious and a little bit risky. So I did not like this, although it would get the job done. Um, and if you wanna, if you wanna um, keep a blade dressed, you, everybody's seen the steel that comes with every block of knives. And, and again, this blade is a little bit different than sharpening a straight knife. So I've developed this, this rolling technique where I, I try to go like this. And this is also, as you can see, a little bit awkward. Um, bear in mind that most of the cutting on this thing is happening in the center third. Mm -hmm. You're not so much using these blades out here unless you're really rocking it, which is hard on the wrist. You rock it a little bit to get more cutting, but rocking it a lot is not gonna be healthy for your wrist. So then I graduated, I had a, this, uh, these are just different tools you may have around this was a sharpening tool that came with my, uh, my camp, my all purpose camp knife. And it has this little tab on it with little carbon steel bevels and you can do this. Now again, my fingers are just a little too close. There's my phone going off. This, this is not exactly safe either. So I saw this. On <laughs> <laughs> now this I like. So now we've got a handle and there's a carbon steel and a ceramic blade in here. There's a diamond blade, a diamond set in here. That's for ceramic knives, which we don't have. So now I can just scrape this thing like this back and forth a few times and then go to the ceramic and dress it out. And I can feel that that's putting uh, an edge on there and it doesn't take much. And already it's Ooh. sharp. <laughs> I'm gonna to have to be careful. No blood. So okay. it doesn't take much. This is on our in our Amazon shop. It's a, it's a, I don't know, it's twelve or fourteen dollars or something like that. And that's your favorite. And because my fingers are not in front of the blade, mm -hmm. you know, I, what I actually do is I sit it like this and I and I roll it like this. This looks like the safest. And, I, and then I flip it so you can get because the 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 carbon bits in there are kind of directional. And you know, a half a dozen of those swipes like that, and this edge comes right back. Yeah. 
So, and I like that, that this can sit and yeah. it's very sturdy. Yeah. So this is my favorite, but if you have these other tools around, you can make be it careful. Work. You can make it work. Well, I'm glad I have you around to do this. So, Cause what I just say, Tom, my knife is getting dull yeah, and, I do and how often you're going to have to sharpen it is going to depend on how often you use it. So, um, but it's not that often that I say, yeah. Hey, can you sharpen this? Yeah, you're actually. It's more my kitchen knives that I'm always at saying, I need you to sharpen these. You're supposed to leave that actually on the, on the thing. Oh. And do it like. Well, this. that would be safer. Okay, I don't think you need to sharpen that anymore. Okay, it's sharp. That it's knife is be, sharp. It's going to be dangerous for okay. me just to pick it up. Okay, here Jesse's answering some questions here. Okay. Uh, the YouTube video on December 10th, Holland Wood Bowl Care and Sharpening Your Mezzaluna Knife. Nice. 12 of 2019. Was that one of the newer ones? Hey, yeah. that, would, that was just a year ago. Okay. Not even my a year. first how to, to treat the bowl video needs to be updated because I don't think we had, we didn't, did we have this then? I don't think so. But we have, we did a, um, last update. year, okay. last year we did a, a video all about Holland yeah. Bowl products. We have products. to go watch some nutmeg note video, <laughs> nutmeg notebook videos and figure out what, what's in there for us to learn. Because in another <laughs> video, you did show how to um, oil or wax the bowls in another video. There's one really old, one of my I first know, but ones. you did another one since okay. that, I think. All right. Didn't you? I think you did. Okay. I think he did. Yeah, my guys. first one where I did bowl treatment, I was like totally... Uh, uh, had camera fear. I was like, not. You not, were stiff. Okay. You were stiff. Wasn't comfortable on camera on that first one. No, I wanna, but the I information do was good. Okay. Well, I want to do a new one and take I it know. down. But the information that he shared okay. was good. And anybody can wax or yeah. um, use the mineral oil to um, dress out the bowls. It's really easy. Okay. They're really, they're not difficult to take care of at all, but you do just need to know. And one thing that I would like to point out too, is if you, if you get a bowl that has um, more of a light colored center, then the light color in the center is going to show more of the cutting marks. And it's also going to show more of the green patina that will happen um, because the, the, because of the lighter color in the middle. But you know, I don't let that bother me because I bought the that bowl to chop in, and you know, and this one is um, one of the older ones, and you can just see how it gets that green patina. Now, if we did take this and set this out in the sun for you know an afternoon, it would help fade that yeah. green while, patina. While you're holding that one up, mm -hmm. uh, Mary is looking at the 15 inch beach bowl. Do you have one on hand that with that finish? So this, this is the beach. Yeah, and this is, this is a, a, you know, they all come different. They, they all look it, different. They're each unique. Our, our first beach wood bowl was a even color. It was this light color all, all the way around. Mm -hmm. So we weren't into the, what Corey calls the heartwood with that bowl. It must've been a bigger log. Uh, this one is, is, you know, heartwood and then and then more of the light wood so so inside it used to look more like this now you know because i've this is my chopping bowl you've got all those chop marks and the green patina but you know it still it still looks okay and it's got you know the cuts and stuff so you and know this one's going on three years old yeah and i feel personally that the beech wood is probably the most forgiving for the chopping blade but as i mentioned in this chat feed earlier the cherry wood is prettier tammy likes the cherry wood bowl i actually do prefer the beechwood bowl for chopping, but it's all aesthetic preference, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. So, so this is the beechwood. That's so hopefully the beechwood. That and then this is cherry, but, and see how this one does have that, um, where is it? That little bit of um, different color. That's just how that tree was. And then this one is also cherry. And, but this one, I did ask Corey to pick one out for me that was more uniform in color. Yeah, because see this one around. had this one had uniform here, but then it had some, you know, where a, a branch or something was coming off. It had this different grain going here. But but it's, you know, it's this is a working bowl. This is an everyday get your salad chopped bowl. It's not um, it and then for my fruit bowl, I told him, you know, just like a little bit of variation would be okay in the color. And so um, this is the one that he picked for me. And this one is cherry. 
And this is the 15 inch fruit bowl. And, um, and I love it. And it does really seem to help um, the bananas from getting too ripe too fast. So, okay. but you know how it is when you go to Costco or Sam's Club and you're buying the big bunches of bananas. When you go, they're either all very ripe or they're all super dark green. And you think, if I buy those, are they going to ripen? Um, yes. We're out of time. We're out of time. Oh my goodness. Okay. Did you even talk to show your plates? You didn't. Did yeah, you we did. You, you were busy. That? You were busy. Oh, I was over working over here. You were over there working. So yeah. Okay. So, so if you have it... any questions about any of this stuff, we're happy to answer. We love the quality. They're very good quality, top quality, made in the USA, and they have excellent customer service. I mean, as you can tell, Corey is just a very sweet and kind guy. And um, he has taken really good care. Yeah, it's Corey and his dad and his sister yeah. that, that are the and then principals they, at the plant. Mm -hmm. And then they have 17 um, Well, their picture employees. was on the newsletter I sent out. Uh, I included the family photo yes. in, the, yes. in, the, in the, for those of you that are subscribed to nutmegnotebook.com, the blog, you all got that in your email. Yeah, and they're just really nice people, excellent customer service. And the products are fantastic. Okay. So, um, so we thank you guys for joining us today. This was fun. And we will be doing a live on Sunday. A regular live. A this regular one was extra. live. This is extra. Which, but this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, we will be doing another live. So you'll want to join us then. And we do have, we've already got a big list of questions. And I don't know if we're going to do a topic or if we're just going to answer questions. I haven't decided yet. It's been a really crazy busy week. So, um, okay. Okay. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help oh, wait. you. Oh, wait. Thank you, moderators. <laughs> and give us a thumbs up if you didn't already. Um, we only have 60 thumbs up. We need more thumbs ups. Okay. You're, you're just, just, you just go for those thumbs ups. Okay. I like those thumbs so anyway, up. They uh, help our ratings Tiffany on Tiffany and, and, and Randy and Jesse, thank you for thank being here. Thank you. Um, you guys are awesome. They had just a little bit of work to do today, I noticed. So okay. thank you for taking care of business. Uh, yeah, we appreciate so. They volunteer, you guys. Um, and they do an awesome job of answering questions. And, they and, do. And, They're very knowledgeable. And, and taking care of everything they can while we're doing what we do. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway, so yeah. So, and if you Thumbs haven't, up for Tammy. and if you yeah. haven't subscribed to Nutmeg Notebook, the blog yet, please hop on over to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe. And when you do, you get um, an email immediately sent to the email that you registered for, and you will get a link to some exclusive recipes that are just for subscribers. And if you don't see them in your inbox, do check your junk mail or your spam because oftentimes they end up there. And I think that's everything that we have going on right now. Yeah. Mary's going to go for two of the Beechwood Bowls. Awesome. Because times two, that's, you know, $50 less if you were going to do it as yes. opposed to cherry. Yes. And, and they work beautiful. And our very first bowl was a Beechwood Bowl. And it's still in use at our daughter's house. And that one's like four years old or five years old. And, you know, going strong. Okay. So, Okay. All right, everybody. Now we're going to sign and off. And we'll see you Sunday back here okay. at four o'clock. You have to say I'm thing. Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy one, one meal at a time. time. Bye. Do you have to shut it off here since it's Zoom yeah. or at the uh, camera? Oh, yeah, we're on a, <laughs> see, we're on a whole different camera setup here. See, uh, I thought it looked like he was getting ready to run over and shut I off was. the camera. I, but this is a Zoom. We're, we're broadcasting for the first time from Tammy's computer instead of mm -hmm. instead of the, mm -hmm. the phone camera. So here's in stream. I've got the button. I'm pushing the button. You're gonna now. push the button? Bye. Love you guys. Bye.